Hello YouTube, I'm Vince White. I'm an employment attorney on this channel. On this channel, we answer publicly posted questions, I'm trying to get folks the answers they need from an employment attorney. We have a question here from YouTube user Jennings SWB, but what it comes down to, what it comes down to is the pro se rebuttal, EEOC rebuttal 101. I'll read the question, then we're gonna answer it. Jennings asked us five months ago, Sorry, Jennings. This is a big video, and I, for some reason, I just didn't make it for a long time. I agreed to take my EEOC claim to early mediation. My former employer, however, refused mediation. I just recently received their response, which in the EEOC is called the employer's position statement to my claim, and it is littered with incorrect information. So much so, they even got the initial date of my employment incorrect by two years. My rebuttal statement is due in a couple of weeks. Do I correct every error in their statement or just focus on a handful of key issues? Okay, here's what you do. First and foremost, go through that position statement line by line. Each inaccurate item add to a list. Number them. And then look at your list and look at each inaccurate statement on this new list and think really hard about which one of those inaccurate statements as many as you need of them do you need to address to prove the elements of your claim right if you are if you're bringing a disability discrimination claim right you need to prove that you suffered a negative workplace consequence and that was somehow motivated by your disability Right? That's what you need to prove. Those are the elements of that claim under federal law, which is what the EEOC adjudicates. So go through your list of every single inaccuracy and say, how do I, how do I show, in addition to what I wrote in my complaint, how do I show that they are full of it in this position statement and I am meeting the elements of what I need to prove to show disability discrimination? That's your disability discrimination list. That's what you need to prove. Set that aside. Now you may have additional claims. Often you may have multiple claims. You might have a retaliation claim. There's a lot of other claims that you might have, right? Go through the same process for every one of your claims and make a list of what in their position statement you need to correct, what inaccuracies in their position statement you need to correct in your rebuttal to prove the elements of your claims. Each claim having a list, right? Go through all of them, you're gonna make one more. One more list after you go through all your claims. You're gonna look at your original big list and you're gonna go through, and as you're going through that list, you're gonna mark it uh, mistake but important for things that are, seem like legitimate mistakes, like your employer legitimately made a mistake, but it's important. Or lies, right? Sometimes employers lie in their position statement. Lies are opportunities. We have a lot of videos in this channel about this. <sighs> Make yourself another list and include all the mistake but important and all the lies. And that list is gonna be how you attack their credibility in general, right? And then your rebuttal is gonna be you specifically Going through me like, hey, they made a mistake about this. This is not correct. And here's why my disability discrimination claim is legit. And I meet all of the elements of that claim. So I should be victorious here. And you go through for all of your claims. And then add a little bit of juice to the mix. Because you got this whole list, the last list you created of mistake but important and lie. And really important mistakes and lies are really great ways to attack the credibility of your employer. So you're going to make some decisions about how to do that. Now, this is heavily simplified. This is if you're pro se, you're re that's what pro se means. You're representing yourself, right? This is going to be an effective method that I would recommend to go through this, but you should be represented. This is not going to be a top tier rebuttal. This is not going to be 
the most amazing rebuttal in the world. You are not going to be the sun, the moon, the stars of employment litigation. You are going to be someone who is pro se and doing an organized job at pushing your case forward. And that's pretty good. That's better than most, but it could be better. I recommend you be represented, but if you're not represented, this is how you do it. Um, this is also a really good method if you want to give organized notes to your attorney. Like you're represented, you're not actually drafting the rebuttal, but obviously you live through this stuff and your employer, your employment attorney didn't. So like, you're going to know more, right? You're going to know more because you live through it. It's your life. We're, we're talking about, it's not a Bon Jovi song, but it's your life. We're talking about your life, events you live. So your knowledge of them is going to be far in excess of your employment attorney's knowledge. If you create these lists... A smart employment attorney is going to say, oh my gosh, thank you so much. This is amazing. It's wonderful. This is very helpful. Like, thank you. And they're going to draft a rebuttal. And they're going to say, hey, can you look at the rebuttal? Make sure I got everything right. And they're going to submit it for you, if you, assuming they did, right? It's a little bit of conversation. You may make some additions. Might make some changes. It's always the way. That's ideally what's going to happen with your attorney. I wouldn't include every single inaccuracy because you're dealing with a government employee. I'm not slamming government employees. But odds are, if there's a long document, they ain't going to read it. I run into that all the time. All the time. Like, I'll, I'll talk about a series of events that are pretty salacious and wild that if you read a document, you'd be like, that was wild. I can't believe they flew a racist flag to the moon. Right? Like that's something that would stick in your mind if you read it. Right? And the investigator would be like, What now? What are you talking about? Yeah, investigator, they chartered a rocket from SpaceX and they they flew some racist imagery to the moon. They had to hide it from the company because SpaceX probably wouldn't have done it. Yeah, so they just had this giant box that they delivered to the moon. They paid a lot of money for it. And then when it got there, it slowly opened up and it was wildly racist. And the investigator would be like, oh, I didn't see that in the papers. Must have glossed over that. Really? Really? You glossed over the seven fucking paragraphs about racism in space? Like, no, you didn't. No, you didn't. You didn't read it. You didn't read it. And that's the risk. The risk here is if it gets too long, they're not going to read it. But if instead you treat your rebuttal as an attempt to do the government employees work for them then you're you're setting yourself up for success right if they can go through a very clear very organized list of how your employer done fucked up not to be so colloquial but like if they can look at it and be like well that's not true that's not true that's not true and this employer looks like they did some of these mistakes on purpose well you've done done yourself a good turn there my friend you made a move you might have recruited someone to your side. That investigator might be thinking, this employer's up to no good. And I love that for you. I want you to be successful. I want you to win your claims. <sighs> All right. I think that's probably the most I can do for Rebuttal 101. If I get more complex than that, I think I'm actually going to be confusing people. So do ask in the comments down below. I will check the comments. I will try to f provide follow-up answers. Um, remember, not everybody works. Got my own catchphrase wrong. Almost everybody works. Not everybody wins. Be smart out there. Take care.